What? Where have no. we been? Whoa, what's happening? Hold on. Slash what's it with says, all the secrets, Christine and Matthew? It says you're live. It says you're live. Oh, welcome hmm. everybody. Are we live? Facebook. That is a question. Instagram. Okay. YouTube. Let us know. Let us know. If you haven't noticed, it's been a hot minute. Half a minute. Since we've been around. Let's see here. Let's try and turn this YouTube, up. can you hear us? YouTube, no, can you right. hear us? 10, 11, 12, turn it up to 13. Instagram, can you hear us? Turn it us? up to 13, all right. Facebook, can you hear us? YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, give us a thumbs up or like or comment. Comment. If you can hear things, if you just see our mouths moving, but do not hear any words coming out of it, be <laughs> sure and let us know. We are... Because you can't hear it anyway. Yes. Hi, Diana. Good morning. All right. Let me type in... I am glad to see us, too. To Facebook. I'm glad to be back. Not Facebook. YouTube. Hi, everyone. <sighs> All right. YouTube. Uh-oh. Loud and clear on Instagram. Loud and clear. YouTube, can you hear us? Facebook, are we... Oh, we just lost Facebook. <laughs> Reconnecting to Facebook, apparently. <sighs> All right. My friends. We have had, how long has it been since we've done an AMA? AMA? I was, was just it, looking. Was it like this? Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Can you hear us? Can on you hear YouTube? us? Hopefully you can hear us. Let us know. Mic test. Mic, Mic test. test. Hi, Nicole. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Hi, Abby. Uh, Pat Yada. Hello. Good morning. See? I'm it's out of been a while, so we're trying to Instagram make sure handles. that we can. Oh, great. Lisa. Yes. Is it score? Levels loud, levels too low. Do you want me to just hopefully, stop talking? That's <laughs> the cool audio too. on YouTube is it's good. All right. hopefully. It's been a little while, so we've been gone. Out and about. Not AFK. really. We've actually been home. So <laughs> you know. Where have we been? We have a lot going on, my friends. We have secrets to share with you. Secrets. We're gonna talk about the secrets, but we're gonna talk about talking about the secrets because we're not going to actually tell you secrets. the secrets today go ahead and write in the comments if you know what <laughs> those secrets no are sense. or want to guess what those secrets are so those just joining exactly by the way welcome say. to the nursing school show hello uh, so let's see our Ask last us anything yes. this is matthew i'm christina hi it's... i am i'm matthew yes it's been a little while since uh, we've done our last this. one was the beginning of february Oh, really? That yes. soon? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so it really see? hasn't been that long, but it's been a hot minute, like I've said. So welcome, welcome all to the nursing school show. Welcome. Christina, I knew someone was going to say it. Matthew. Thank you. We too. are here to answer all nursing school related questions and also answer the question of where have we been and what is happening. Abby says free stuff. We always have free stuff for you. Hey, free by stuff. the way. Um, we have a fantastic cheat sheet on critical thinking in nursing school. So go to nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash critical thinking. That is up for you, Abby. Critical thinking in nursing school is so important. I was just writing just last week, I mm -hmm. think. I wrote an email last week or was it just earlier this week? See, time is a blur right now. <laughs> um, about critical thinking. So it's fresh on my mind. There you go. Um, nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash critical thinking. Go get that free critical thinking cheat sheet. Mm. All right. So more, more guesses while we get through this. And also, so two things that I want you to write in the comments. Obviously, um, your guesses on what's coming up <laughs> in the near future. And the other thing is, yes, nursing school related questions. Questions for us, not us, for Christina. I'll just read them to you. You <laughs> do not want to hear my answers. Or we do. You just don't want to take his advice. <laughs> I am a nurse, by the way, if you don't know who we are. Matthew is here for the comedic value I am not of a nurse. all of this. Uh, what was the website for Brandy? It's nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash critical thinking. Matthew can probably put it in the YouTube I can put it chat. in YouTube, not in... Oh, look, not links. in Instagram, unfortunately, because I... Instagram's on my phone. Let's and see. Which one was it? I can't type from here. Critical thinking, nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash critical thinking. Get oh, there it the, um, it's a free cheat sheet up there. So you just put in your name and your email and it'll send it right to you. It's okay. amazing. You have an exam next Tuesday, Brand. Is it Brandy? Am I reading? Brandle. Brandle. Right. XO, oh, okay. XO. Yes. I can't really read from <laughs> here. Um, any tips? What is your exam on? 
All right. Tell me what your exam is on. Uh, okay, let's just jump into this with a with a question real fast, and then we'll let's give a little more updates. But Samantha is asking, what's the best drug guide book you recommend? I'm going to sneak over here, because it's over here. Where's the, the drug guide? The old one's over here. The new one's upstairs. Oh, okay. They're there everywhere. Davis's the drug guide. One. I said it right. Davis's, Davis's so drug guide. The guy was named Davis, I'm guessing, and he I'm made guessing. the drug guide. That's why it's Davis's drug guide. This is the one I recommend. Okay, so, <laughs> so I work with patients where I work with patients. We have students a lot. And um, so I was talking to uh, one of the nursing students that I and I had her bring in her drug guide. So I'm like, I want to see her drug guide. It was one before. It was like, I don't know. It was something else, um, like a lip and cot or a, am I saying that right? Like a springer. It was like just kind of a regular drug guide. And I'm like looking through this thing. Like this does not have the information that you need. You got to get this one. <laughs> I'm literally telling her this. This is my favorite. My friends, seriously. Davis's drug guide. It's very easy to navigate. And the best thing about it is that in the front here, it has classifications for your medications. So you can group them by classifications, which is always how we teach. So when you're learning medications, group them by drug class, not by individual drug, because the medications that belong in the same pharmacologic class and even sometimes the same therapeutic class will act the same way in the body. And so instead of learning each individual medication, you can just group them by drug class, and then learn them all together. So much easier. I'm telling you right now, so much easier. So what I love about the Davis's drug guide is that they kind of do that for you in the front. They group things by medication class. And they walk through here uh, what each classification does, the mechanism of action, the things you need to consider for each class. It's fabulous. So... There you go. It is a mix of therapeutic and pharmacologic medication classes. So be advised. Uh, I do recommend that you try to stick with the pharmacologic class, uh, but therapeutic could, might work too. All right. So that was for Samantha on YouTube. So yes, yep. Davis's drug guide. Um, it's there, there was a question on how much. I, I don't remember how much it was. Go ahead and- 50 bucks maybe on Amazon. Yeah. I think probably that sounds right. I, Probably I around get there. The new get the newest version. I think the newest mm -hmm. version is like this tealish color. Um, I do... think it's even different than that because the one, I don't think we even have the updated one here. I, they release it every year and I can hardly keep track. And do you remember our uh, page for all, all the stuff like that? I don't remember. No, we have links on our website somewhere. Does anybody know where our <laughs> links are? <laughs> I have no idea. Let me check. I do quick. not remember. Um, but just go to Amazon, search for Davis's drug guide. I also yeah. want to mention how I tab this medication guide. Get a lot of questions on this. So I don't tab like tab it any particular super special way. It's actually just by the medications themselves. I don't know if you could see this. Hopefully YouTube, you can see that. Instagram, you can see like I've got ferrosamide and I, I, all these like ACs, gabapentin, I've got, they're just all individual medications. The colors don't mean anything. Uh, it's not like group by class or anything. It's just, I tabbed the medications that I use the most, you know, on the floor. So that is how I tab this. Super helpful for me um, because, you know, if I'm doing famotidine and I want to check out famotidine, it's right there. Or, you know, Tylenol. I think I have Tylenol in here somewhere. Yep, right there. There you go. So I just tab, just tab it like that. Um, that is the most helpful for me. If you want to get fancy and color code based on class, that's awesome too. Um, I just didn't because that sounds like a lot more work, but... All right, so um, Samantha, while while we're on the while we're on the books kick, uh, she's also asking about uh, pathophysiology books. I know that you had one. I think Great it might be down there question. too. Also, in the meantime, Brandel, you were asking just generally about hematology and diabetes. Is there anything specific that you want to know about hematology and diabetes? So, um, and studying for hematology and diabetes. Let me walk through that with you with the pharmacology books. Okay. So um, I always recommend that when you're studying med surge, like hematology and what was the other one? Uh, uh, hematology diabetes. and diabetes. 
Um, any med surge disorder, uh, what I really recommend that you have is two kinds of resources, a high level overview book. So this one is the one I read physiology made incredibly easy. This breaks it down for you really simply um, step, you know, actually this is not step by step. Our stuff is step by step. This is not step by step. Breaks it down really simply and easy to understand terms for you uh, so that you can get kind of a high level overview of all the disorders that you're learning about. So that just helps you to kind of more conceptualize, okay, what is actually happening? That and there's, you know, nice pictures around. There's nice pictures. So that's cool. Um, can you hold this, please? Okay, so this Thank is the you. one. Um, that one. And then you want this, the detailed one? Where is the Mark Manual? Yes, yeah. please. The oh, Mark oh. Manual. <laughs> This one is uh, heavy. It's uh, heavy. All right. Uh, the Merck Manual. I recommend having so two resources a high level overview textbook, then a deep dive textbook. Now, this would be something like the Merck Manual. It doesn't have to be the Merck Manual. If you find a different one, that's totally fine. But what you're looking for in what I call a deep dive textbook, like the Mark Manual, is that it needs to go on the chemical and cellular and somatic level. You need to have a deeper dive into what is happening with the med surge disorders. And so that's what the Mark Manual does. So pairing these two together is really helpful for you when you're in nursing school, high level overview, deep dive. Now, good news. If you're a nursing SOS member, we do this for you. You don't need to get, you know, these two textbooks. All you have to do is watch a video and I will explain it to you both the high level overview and the deep dive step by step. So like I said, like books like this, they don't walk things, they don't walk you through the disorder step by step. They don't tell you, okay, how's the pathophysiology go with this disorder? In our videos for Nursing SOS, we walk you through literally step by step what happens with this disorder and why does it matter? So we do a lot of the critical thinking for you. We hold your hand through the critical thinking process with med surge, fundamentals, all this stuff. So you don't have to read a textbook, try to figure it out yourself. You can just watch a video and it will teach it to you. So there's that. All right. Pause there. Um, Carrie Ann's also asking, oh, you have your third exam on Wednesday. Good mm -hmm. luck. Uh, so tips and tricks on fluid and electrolytes and elimination. So fluid and electrolytes and elimination, are those in here too? I think yes. Incredibly mm -hmm. Easy has a one specially for yeah, fluid, and fluid and electrolytes. I think oh, there it is. Oh. Go get it. Okay. So <laughs> go get it. <laughs> so made incredibly easy again. Uh, this series is just so great for a high level overview. There's They've got tons too, like dose calc and um what else do they have fundamentals assessment assessment oh yeah we have, right over there. <laughs> we have assessment back there this series just has a lot you've probably seen it before i mean i'm probably not the first one to show you but this is a very nice series to have in nursing school uh, because it does walk you through very high level how things go in the body now fluid and electrolytes again my friends if you are inside the nursing SOS membership community we have a whole fne course fluid and electrolytes course for you walks you through step by step what goes on with you know hyperkalemia hyponatremia hypermagnesemia all the stuff so it's in there for you we walk you through it step by step so you do not have to worry elimination elimination you know well in our nursing SOS membership community yeah, yes we, we do, do do elimination but like a textbook for elimination would be if you were doing a high level overview it'd be like this series, the Made Incredibly Easy series, that's for fundamentals. I'm sure they have a fundamentals one, um, or even the assessment one. I'm actually pretty confident that's in it's in here too. Okay. It would be in here under like renal or something. And do GI, we just have do we just have any just general tips and tricks on F and E and elimination just to share um, right now? You or? know the thing is, and I wanted to touch on this too with med surge. Anything med surge, you guys know. <laughs> Thank you. I will take these. <laughs> You're awesome. So this goes to um Fluid and electrolytes elimination specifically. Also, Sarah, you're asking about your starting med surge clinical. Um, so we'll probably talk about med surge a little bit and then dive into clinical. Yes. But right now, med surge, learning med surge. Uh, all right, Georgia, you're asking me, my sister, are both moving forward for a second term LPN. Yay, Any congrats. tips on med surge and farm? So why don't we dive a little bit into med surge generally and FNE 
elimination maybe specifically a little bit. Yes. There you go. So when you are taught, uh, when, when you are learning med surgeon nursing school, fundamentals in nursing school, learning any disorder, um, really what you need to be studying is really only four main categories. You have to focus on these four main categories. You ready? Write this down. <laughs> write it down. Um, you can write it down. Actually, I also have a free cheat sheet about it too. Um, but write these down. Pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. So four main things, four main categories. Pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Those are really the only four main categories that you are going to need to learn about, that you are going to be tested on, that you need to know as a nurse and as a nursing student in nursing school. Now, here's where it really gets fun and fancy. When you understand the pathophysiology first, pathophysiology first, then you can understand the more the next three categories. So patho, right? Then signs and symptoms, the nursing assessment and the nursing interventions, because all of it ties back to the pathophysiology. Signs and symptoms. What is going on with the disorder inside the body? What signs and symptoms might you see in a patient? And those are going to stem from the pathophysiology. You have to understand what is going on with the disorder first, and then you can understand the signs and symptoms. Got it? Then the nurse is happening with the disorder or what you think might be going on with the patient, then you more know what to assess for, you know, what to what your focused assessment should focus on. Uh, it'll kind of direct how you assess and what you assess the patient when you know, okay, what could be going on with them and what does the physiology of that. Now, nursing interventions, again, with nursing interventions, and we want to make sure we are fixing the underlying problem, right? We don't want to just slap a Band-Aid over the signs and symptoms. We want to try to fix the underlying problem as much as possible, right? But in order to do that, you have to understand the pathophysiology. You have to actually understand what is going on, right? You have to understand what is going on with the patient's body, with the patho. So that is why it's so important to understand the pathophysiology first before you move on to the other three categories. So Again, write this down, um, and actually I will tell you where to get that cheat sheet too um, in a minute, but write these down. Pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Those are the four main categories that you have to focus on, okay, in nursing school when you study. Now, the uh, these are listed out in a free study checklist that we have for you. So if you go to nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash checklist. Hey, I'm right. It's this one. It's right. that one. Nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash checklist. C-H-E-C-K-L-I-S-T. <laughs> because I can spell on a Wednesday morning. <laughs> so that is that. Check that out because it's going to walk you through how to study those four main categories, right? Patho, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. But remember, friends, it all stems back to that patho. You have to understand that patho first. What happens if you don't? I mean, what happens if you just skip the patho and go right to signs and symptoms, the nursing assessment, and the nursing interventions? Well, you could do that. But the thing is, is that you're just going to be memorizing a list of stuff. You're just going to be memorizing a list of signs and symptoms. You're just going to be memorizing a list of nursing interventions. That is not helpful for you. When was the last time you were tested on rote memorization on your nursing school exam? Never. Right? Like, never. They test you on your critical thinking skills, how you think like a nurse, how you can apply the information that you're learning. That's what they're going to test you on uh, in both your nursing school exams and on the NCLEX for your boards. So that is why it's so important to focus on the pathophysiology first, because you can connect all the dots, understand how the signs and symptoms, the nursing assessment, and the nursing interventions relate to the pathophysiology, because that is going to help you critically think. Okay, cool. Awesome. Great. Uh, let me see here. So yeah, that's med surge in general. Um, so with fluid yeah. and electrolytes, a lot of the, the things thing. that we go over, like, right, it, mm -hmm. it starts with hyper or hypo. So it's already something that's too much or too little of something. Yep. And um, it's so the same it's, it's, thing. Yeah, so focus on 
what the body's supposed to have, and then you can judge the differences from that. Exactly. And the thing with uh, fluid and electrolytes, and really with anything, you also have to know what's normal, right? That's why we take A and P before we go into nursing school. You have to know what's normal, and then you can understand the pathophysiology with it. So with fluid and electrolytes, right, you have to know, you know, what is normal, and then what happens during hy hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, what's the pathophysiology of that, what causes it, what's actually going on, then you can dive into, you know, assessment, interventions, signs and symptoms, all of that. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Awesome. Terry, hello. Yes. Glad to see Good you too. Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello everyone Terry. else as well. Mm -hmm. Welcome to all the members joining and mm -hmm. everyone. It's good to see everyone. This is great. It's good. It really is. All Where's right. my Charlotte? <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Um, so Terry was asking, uh, go over scope of practice for nurses. Yes. Good so question. this kind of depends on what role like scope of practice for nurses um it depends on what role we're talking about when you think of like nursing uh and healthcare in general everyone has a different scope of practice an rn nurse would have a different scope of practice than an lpn or a cna or a med tech or a you know what i there's a there's a tab you know like a, a dietitian obviously a doctor um the pharmacist everyone has a different scope of practice specifically for nursing we most we mostly talk about the three main ones rn versus lpn versus a cna now i want to mention that when we um, inside the nursing access membership community. If you are inside the community, we do have a whole fantastic video for you on scope of practice that itemizes really for you what the different, um, uh, what's the word, um, what you can do for each of the different, um, you know, de degrees, fields. Oh, yes. To, yeah. To, yeah. That RN, LP. Depending on what you're studying, words. depending on what you're studying, today, we have a breakdown of kind of the scope of scope practice, scope mm -hmm. practice for each of those and kind of the differences. And uh, I think it helps a lot before you're even going into or deciding on what path to take, right? Well, yes. do you want to do LPN? Do you want to do RN? Uh, do you want to become a doctor? Um, all uh, of that. NP, so, I, yeah, NP, I forgot yeah. nurse practitioner so. too and the nursing, um, from the nursing model. Um, so when we, when we talk about scope of practice, primarily it's those three, RN, LPN, CNA. So the 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 biggest thing uh two two things that i want you to remember always okay two big things that i want you to remember always uh rns the rn scope of practice encompasses two things um more than the lpn so rns can assess a patient okay and assess a patient and make judgments based on that assessment an lpn cannot do that now check with the state, but by and large, the RN can assess a patient and make clinical judgments based on that assessment. An RN can decide, okay, here's, you know, here was my assessment. Now we're going to do these things like X, Y, and Z. This is the plan of care. This is what we're going to do based on my assessment. Now this is different than an LPN. An LPN can collect information. That's called the LPN assessment. It's collecting information. And then they can collect that information and give it to the RN to then make decisions. But the LPN cannot make plan of care decisions uh, you know, that would be outside the scope of practice by and large. Now, of course, you have to check with, you know, individual states have different, you know, scopes of practice for an RN versus an LPN versus a CNA. Like when I was a CNA, I was allowed to give particular medications. I had to have a, I had a certification on top of my CNA. I, what do they call it? It's like a medication. An add-on? Add, no. An add-on, <laughs> a medication administration, something. So, <laughs> I did have that. I was able to give some medications as a CNA, but other states might not do that. So that's more of an LPN role, perhaps. Um, and there were some things, uh, like as a CNA, if I remember right, I, I could not give injections that like insulin and things that would have been the LPN. So there's di just different scopes of practice for each 
specialty. Let's just call it a specialty. Sure. Um, so the RN can make clinical judgments based on their assessment. The LPN can collect data and relay that data to the RN to then make clinical judgments. Does that make sense? So that first one of the two is assessment and clinical judgments. Now, the second one is patient education. The RN scope of practice is patient education. The LPN cannot educate a patient. Okay. I, they, they, depending on your state, but for by and large, it is the RN's job to do patient education, make sure that the patient understands what's going on. Uh, they understand the plan of care and all of that. So that kind of makes sense, right? Um, the LPN is collecting data. They're relaying that data to the RN. The RN then makes clinical judgments, ma you know, makes other focused assessments based on that data makes the clinical judgments and then they educate the patient based on what's going on because the RN is creating that plan of care. Does that make sense? Awesome. Cool. All right. Now, again, we actually do have a whole video about that inside oh. the nursing access membership community. Yes. If you have more questions. All right, a couple quick shout outs. And then uh, Lisa, I do Sweet. see your comments and a couple other people have been asking about farm. So we're gonna dive into let's farm mm -hmm. uh, here in a little bit, but uh, let's see, Allie has uh, your OB final tomorrow. Yay! Please pray for me. Okay. Prayer is going out for sure. Going up. Uh, up and out, yes. Uh, awesome. Let's see, what else? I think that was, yeah, yeah. So I think the next topic is pharmacology. So uh, Lisa's asking more specifically, do we have a list of common drugs that are being used? Oh, wine is asking that as well. It's very difficult to remember all the drugs. Do you have any tips for that? Yeah. So kind of the same thing. And then just in general, people are asking about farm and what to do to succeed in pharmacology. Yeah, it's a lot to try to remember, memorize all of the medications that you have to remember, right? So I have the drug guide here. So this is the one, like I mentioned before, earlier on in this slide. This is the one that I always recommend, Davis's drug guide. This is 14, 15, 16. Are we on 16 maybe? Oh, no, no, no. 17. Um, 17 or 18. I don't know. Make sure you get the updated yes. version. Okay. So this is the 14th? This is 14. Okay. Yeah. So Lisa, you, you mentioned a little bit earlier. Is that the 14th? So the one we have here is the 14th, but it's an old one. So make sure that when you go to Amazon and look it up, look up the latest one. Copyright 2015. So now it's 2021. So that would be... You know, that would be quite a ways. Uh, screenshot this, friends. Screenshot. Screenshot. Screenshot this book so you have it I for will later. I my coffee back <laughs> All right. Screenshot it so you have it for later, okay? So you can look it up. It's um, Davis's Drug Guide. I think if you just type in Davis's Drug Guide, it'll come up on Amazon. So this is the one we recommend. Um, now, with... Pharmacology, like we said at the beginning of the video, I really, it's really important that you break down medications by class, by drug class, pharmacologic or therapeutic. Um, so therapeutic can work, but not always just be advised about that. Um, but pharmacologic class will tell you how the medication acts in the body and all the medications within one pharmacologic class will act the same way in the body. They have the same mechanism of action. That's what we call it. Mechanism of action simply means how does this drug act in the body? Mechanism of action. That's all it means. How does this medication act in the body? Okay. So what I really like about the Davis drug guide is that it has the classifications here in the front. Really nice. Now, Lisa, your question, is there a list of common drugs that are used? Um, it dip okay. So Yes and no. It depends on what floor you are working on. So where I am at, um, we have, you know, a different set of medications that we deal with, um, you know, for our patients than uh, another nurse in a different specialty would have. Like an OB nurse has a, a different you know, they give different medications than a nurse on a med surge floor or a nurse in, you know, a, on a cancer unit for sure. You know, depending on what specialty, what floor, what clinical site you are at will depend what that will, you know, drive what medications you often see. Now, um, with that, um, the NCLEX and your nursing school exams will throw anything at you. 
the NCSBN, NCSBN, I know that's a lot of letters, the NCSBN, those are the people that put out the NCLEX. They create the NCLEX, the NCSBN. So they do not publish a list of medications that they will test you on. They say, here you go. Here's all the medications in existence. We consider all of them fair game. That's what they say. So really, in reality, they can throw anything at you. In practice, do they do that? Maybe. You, honestly, we hear it all the time that students go take their nursing exams and their boards and they get a question uh, with a medication that they have never heard of before ever in their life. That's fine. Try your best. Move along. Not a big deal. Just keep going on that exam. Like anything, right? Like you're going to get questions thrown at you that you just don't like. They're out of left field. They're the footnote on page 1320 of your textbook. You know, you're going to get questions like that. Do your best. Move along. Um, so no, Lisa, they do not publish a list of medications that they will test you on. Uh, anything is fair game. Now, how many medications are in the world? I don't even a know. Lot. A, a lot. A lot. So that being said, also, that's why going back to what you're saying and what Wan is saying is just difficult to remember all the drugs. And um, yes, there's a lot of drugs out there. That's why we do like to recommend when possible to um, start studying at the pharmacological class because all the drugs under that pharmacological class kind of act similarly yeah so do by doing that thing. that's a way good way of grouping up how you study so mm -hmm. you're you're not having to study hundreds and hundreds of each being specifically unique you can actually group them in ways that are helpful to you yes. so that's why we recommend doing that absolutely um, and then what christina is saying too yeah uh you can do your best you can study as much as possible learn as many of the drugs as you can uh they'll they'll probably come up with some curveballs that you've never even heard of they if, will if you if you can if they give the pharmacologic class and then you can kind of suss it out that way that would be helpful mm -hmm. if not then sometimes you're just going to have to say okay i really don't know that one and uh read the question well try and try and make your best guess that way Yep. Um, they will throw curveballs at you for sure. Just be, just know that going in. It's not a big deal. It happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. So don't even worry. Um, so with that, um, like Matthew said, make sure that you are learning the mechanism of action of the medication. Make sure you are grouping them by, by pharmacologic class wherever possible. And you are understanding the mechanism of action. Now, Kind of the same thing with the four key factors of med search. Patho, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Those are the four things that you need to know for med search. If you are just joining us now, we have a lot of people coming on. I talked about med search maybe pretty early on, like yeah, 9, 10, maybe on. we started. Um, so like 20 minutes ago. Um, go back. So go back um, after the live Q&A. Go back and watch the video part of the video on med surge where I talked about how to study med surge in those four main categories. So patho, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Now, here's the beautiful thing about this is that with pharmacology, the same advice still stands. It's just slightly tweaked. So for pharmacology, what you're going to learn and focus on are four main categories. You've got the mechanism of action. How does the drug act in the body? The mechanism of action. So instead of patho for med surge, it's mechanism of action for pharmacology. Does that make sense? Mechanism of action. Side effects. What are the side effects of the medication? Nursing assessment. What are you going to do? Nursing considerations. Uh, how do you give it? What's the antidote? Uh, what are things that you need to consider when administering it? What are contraindications? Like, should this patient even have it? All of those things, nursing considerations. So that's like kind of the interventions part. And then the assessment, of course, is assessment part. So mechanism of action, okay. Mechanism of action, side effects, nursing assessment. How do you assess the patient before, during, and after the medication? And then nursing considerations, uh, you know, how do you give it? Should you give it? Uh, all the judgment calls that go with that. Does that make sense? Are you all 
following along. Can I get a thumbs up? If you are on YouTube, can you please hit that like button if this is making sense? And also YouTube, if you want us to do this more, hit that like button mm -hmm. uh, because I also, want to know. tell us times, days, which you would like to have AMAs or us to come on and talk with you guys and hang out. Uh, we yeah. are, it, like we said, we've been kind of out of it for a little bit, but we want to dive oh, back nice. in and uh, see what time works best for everyone. So go ahead and hit a com or hit a comment. Hit no. a comment. I don't think you, I don't think you hit comments. What don't days hit comments. work best for you yes. for us to go live for these AMAs? Tell us what days work best. Um, yeah, we like, uh, we, well, okay. So what was it? July of last year. I think we started and we did twice a week, July through February. So that's yeah. what seven months. So fun. And then we needed to stop. Cause like we said at the beginning of this video, we have some super secret things going on that we will tell you about in the coming weeks. Um, so we and I'm just going to give a pause. quick, quick tease there. Okay. A lot of the things that we've been talking about in this AMA has to do with those secrets that we've been talking about. So if what's that coming? what's your appetite and you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, hit all the bells. Hit so, all the bells. There you go. YouTube, hit the bell, subscribe and hit the bell. Um, Instagram, please follow me on Instagram. I'm pretty sure. So Instagram at nursing SOS. Uh, Instagram is more like real time for me. I just kind of, you know, like do the stories and stuff. So follow along with our stories. I will update you. Instagram probably first. So Instagram will probably be the first to know Ooh, about what is going fancy. on. Um, actually, I shouldn't say that because our members are going to know first. So if you're a Nursing SOS member, you are going to know first. But then Instagram is going to know after that. So <laughs> there you go. And Super the exciting. timeline of that is really soon. Really soon. So make sure that you start watching my stories every single day. Start watching our Instagram stories every single day. Um, and I am so excited. Can she I just, can I just really excited. burst? I, I could just burst. I am so, I can't even, I cannot even. Okay. Uh, where can I find I'll the med cool. surge template you guys were talking about? Do we have a uh, yes. cheat so, sheet or Yes, something the cheat sheet, the a... med surge cheat sheet. If you go to nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash checklist, that is the med surge cheat sheet for you literally walks you through step-by-step -step how to study med surge. It's a checklist that you follow, which is so cool. So nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash checklist. Okay. Forward slash being the little slash huh. thing. Huh. Like huh. All right. Yes. Uh, do you want to talk one. a little bit more? To, uh, so hopefully that answered questions for now about yes. uh, pharmacology. Uh, Lisa, if that answered your questions, go ahead and thumbs up. Or if you have more questions, go ahead and list it out. Uh, the last thing I want to say about that, mm -hmm. yes, they don't give you a common list. In our membership, we do have a, a medication database that has yes. Upwards to 130, I think exactly, actually. Yeah. Ish, mm -hmm. Around there. So, uh, over we, 100 medications. So, we, we awesome. did go through and think through what are the common. Yeah, the most common meds that you are going to give pretty much regardless of where you're, you're at. We do have, uh, you know, OB meds, we have mental health, we have, you know, med surge, uh, chronic, uh, you know, chronic care medications. So in that medication database inside the nursing SOS membership community, we have actually Lisa already pared it down for you. So yeah. those are really the ones that you will want to focus on are the ones inside the membership community. Now, I'm so glad you brought that up because that medication <laughs> database, my friends, is everything I wish I had in nursing school. It is taking um, the information from medication and breaking it down to only the important information that you have to know. So you don't have to read a book on it if you don't want to. You know, you don't have to uh, try to figure everything out yourself. You don't have to try to uh, do it all yourself. It's not helpful, right? It's not helpful when you don't have a guide to follow in nursing school. It's not helpful when you have to do everything yourself in nursing school. That's not fun, right? <laughs> so that's why we created that medication database. It's inside the nursing SOS membership community for you. So you can just pull up a video and we will teach you what you need to know for the medication, why it's important, how things connect. We do the critical thinking for you and with you. I cannot even, I cannot even tell you enough how amazing it is. <laughs> I am excited about a lot of things today. 
Diana, um, yes, I'm so, so glad that that is helpful for you, the med database. All I right. love it. It is it is amazing. Yeah. So I just wanted to uh, shout out Wen again. Um, I'm currently in my last semester of nursing, uh, but I keep forgetting what I learned before, so it's quite tough for me to remember everything. So pro, you're in your last semester, so you're almost there. You're You're just there, so... I think that 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 counts for a lot. So just keep plugging through and keep yeah. getting through it. Um, I think also just constant practice. And uh, we we get this question quite a few times, like people that even graduated nursing school. I still feel like I don't know everything, or, or I know feel anything. Like I I don't know anything. I yeah. feel like I'm not prepared to enter the workforce, or yeah, what have you. So mm -hmm. I think that that's a normal feeling. Don't don't worry too much about it. Um, the more you practice and the more you get into it, then it'll just start uh, clicking for you. Yes. And even if you look back, you'll realize that, oh, I actually do know a lot more than I did. It's just hard to tell while you're deep in it. So just take a step yes. back and just realize, hey, wait, I do know this stuff. I so, do know something. <laughs> so yeah, you're in your last semester. So congratulations on that. If you're in your last semester, that means that you actually do know something. I know it doesn't feel like it, but it's true. Um, it's, it really is that, you know, you get to a point in nursing school where nothing makes sense. You really do. I mean, it's so much when you hit med surge or like the, the middle of med surge where you're like, I have all these pieces of information. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> you know, kind of things, um, but you don't know how to connect the dots. You don't know what, you know, you don't, you know a lot, but you you don't know how to connect it all together. You're like, I don't know what to do with all this, right? Like, you know things, you just don't know what to do with it. Now, the more you do clinicals, the more you work on the floor, the more practice that you get, the more it's gonna click, right? So I'm gonna shout out the critical thinking cheat sheet again, because that is also key to help you critically think in nursing school. Mm -hmm. So, uh, go to nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash critical thinking, and that's really going to help you. Uh, it's a free critical thinking cheat sheet. It's totally free. So just go download it right now. Nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash critical thinking. Uh, it's a free cheat sheet for you that walks you through how to critically think in nursing school. Where is it? So going to help you. I don't see it. <sighs> I think we did. We put it. There it is. Critical thinking oh, cheat okay. sheet. All right, so, we I'll, have just, so many I'll just copy and Pretty throw that in YouTube as well. Yeah, the link will be in YouTube. Uh, I can't post links on Instagram. I'm sorry, because uh, in the chat, I can't like type in the chat as I'm sitting here. And I don't even know if it would actually end up being a link. I'm not sure. And on that note, I also want to shout out uh, Ara RSS. Hopefully Hello. I'm saying your name right. I'm not, not, not that great with with names so name uh, or instagram handles studying for med surge mm -hmm. tests so we we've been talking a lot about med surge those are the four things the four things to study and yeah. keep track of with med surge if you missed it it's earlier in the uh, live just go ahead and rewatch this live when we're done uh so studying for med surge those four things i'm always so overwhelmed so cutting it down into those categories really help with that yes uh so unmotivated since i bombed the farm test earlier just slogging through so we so do hear, logging <laughs> we do hear that a lot really that it really hits the motivation when you don't do as expected and that that's fine um that happens, and you want to talk a little bit yes, about that? Yes, I do. And yeah. I was just talking to our members about this as well. Um, so when you fail a test, even if you fail out of nursing school, here's the thing, my friend, is that you cannot let it stop you. I know it's a backtrack. I know it sound, it, it feels like a backslide. It feels like you're never going to make it, you know, if you you said, Aristotle, if you bombed your exam for farm right now, it feels like you can never pass another test again. It's just simply not the case. Here's what we see most often with nursing students is that if a nursing student fails out of nursing school, you come back swinging the second time, right? You already know half the information. Now you just have to build off of it. Right. So if you if you also in the same way, if you failed an exam, you know, two weeks ago, you come back swinging, come back stronger. Now, here's the thing you're going to want to avoid is self-sabotaging yourself. Do not self-sabotage your own success. That is not what we do here. Keep going. Stay motivated. You can do it. Keep going. 
all right? Do not self-sabotage yourself. And here's what I mean by self-sabotage. I mean by you go, you take an exam and you don't do as well as you want or else aerosols, right? Like you fail your exam, bomb it, right? Then you just want to go sit on the couch and walk, watch Netflix for two weeks. And Disney Plus. Never Disney Plus. That's a new thing, right? <laughs> never, ever leave your bed again. Just hide under the covers all day, every day. That is not helpful for you. If you do that, if you self-sabotage your own success and don't study for the next exam, what's going to happen the next time around? You're going to bomb the next exam, right? That is not helpful. So what you have to do, pick yourself back up. You can do it. Study for the next exam and watch, watch my friend, you will pass. Study, study more efficiently, study better, you know, stay, keep your head in the game. Nursing school is like this whole mental game, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Keep your head in the game and study for the next exam, even if, you know, you bombed one before. Now, here's the key thing too. Meet with your instructor after you fail an exam, or even if you didn't do as well as you wanted to, or even like me in nursing school, even if I did really well on an exam, I would go meet with my instructor and I would go through the exam with her item by item. Okay. So after your exams, Meet with your instructor and go through your exams with them. Make sure that you understand why you got the questions right and why you got the questions wrong. Now, this does really quite a few things for you. This will help you study better for the next lecture exam, but it will also help you know things more for the final. Yes, I have an appointment with the instructor. Awesome. Yes. Yep. That's just go what through we want. it. Open line of communication. Uh, let them know that you're learning and you want to learn and you want to become the best nurse ever. Yes. And that will go a really long way in them seeing how motivated you are. And it will it, that will also just help you get out of your rut if you are in a rut. So yeah, definitely. That is awesome that, that you have an appointment with your, your instructor. That is, that is great. Absolutely. Also, Christina just mentioned something that it is really a mental, like nursing school. It's, it's a lot yeah. of it is mental. And I can say this now probably, right? Yeah. I'm just going to say, uh, definitely, if you haven't yet, make sure you're following Nursing SOS on Instagram. We're posting quite a bit there. And if you need motivation, if you just need a community and you need to know that you're not alone, yes, uh, just go ahead and make sure that you're you're following us on Instagram. At Nursing SOS. At Nursing SOS. On Instagram. And whenever you're feeling down, you can just go there because there, there's a lot of good good stuff there. When you're feeling blue and you don't know what to do. <laughs> Thank you, awesome. children's yeah. Sandra Boynton book. <laughs> yes, Instagram at Nursing SOS. Now, here's the thing about that is um, I do a lot of stories. And I really like doing stories on things that uh, students message me about or, um, you know, have issues with, things like that. And one we just talked about, I think last week, was what do I do if I fail an exam? What do I do if I drop out of nursing school? What, what do I do if I fail out of nursing school? You know, it's all these things. So um, I just want you to know that you're not alone. And I think it's just really helpful to I think know it that. Is. Just like it you is. said, it's a mental yeah. game. You've got to know you're not alone. And also that's really such a key thing for our membership community too, because I mean, how many posts do students post a day in our Facebook group, like we're constantly in there, um, our members posting, uh, we have a private Facebook group for our members. And so we're, me and our team, um, we are constantly in there every single day, um, encouraging. And, and everyone is so encouraging from, from, for each other. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just incredible. And what you're going through is something that someone else is going through. And actually, if you're going through it in nursing school, probably 12 other people in our membership community are going through it too. So everyone's so good at just saying, Hey, you're not alone. Like, let's pray for each other. Here are the tips that I did. Like, here's what I did. Maybe this would be helpful for you. Here's the resources I use. So good. So good. So, so I just heard, uh, saw on Instagram a little bit ago, nurse, someone nurse, I don't know. Uh, you just signed up. So yes. we'll see you in there. And see yeah, the definitely membership. see you in Facebook group if you have Facebook. So yeah, definitely. It's a it's a great community. Mm -hmm. uh, also, two other comments. One, Ashley saying, I start nursing school May 12th. Yes, our June set to meet with instructor always yes. if, if you fail. Even if you pass, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. But yes, 
always keep that line of communication over open if you can go through your tests. On the other side, um, Selma, uh, what if it's an ATI proctored exam? Many teachers say they can't meet with you. I'm currently in an LVN program. So that's yes. okay. You, you want to make that initiative to at least ask them and try. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the thing with, okay, so ATI yeah, and yeah. HESI. There's there's a difference between ATI and HESI and your typical lecture exams. Yep. With ATI and HESI, that is what we call a test bank. So your exam might be different than the person's next to you. Or, uh, you know, your exam that you get for nursing school uh, for an ATI or HESI program, your instructor doesn't know what questions that are going to be asked. However, with that said, don't let it freak you out, Selma. Don't let it freak you out. If you are in an ATI or a HESI program, raise your hand. This is for you. Raise your hand if you are in an ATI or HESI program. Throw a part. Throw up a <laughs> like on YouTube. Hit that like button on YouTube if you are in an ATI or HESI program. Actually, throw up a like if you want us to do this more. Ooh. If you want us to get back into these AMAs like we did last year, uh, let us know. Um, okay, so let's jam on this. ATI or HESI. If you're in an ATI or HESI program, you you have okay key thing you have to make sure that you are doing the practice questions beforehand so do the practice questions online the ATI and HESI give you online do those now after your ATI or HESI exam meet with your instructor still meet with your instructor even though you're not going to be able to go over your questions item by item from your exam even though that's fine still meet with them and go over the concepts don't have to go over the specific questions, mm -hmm. but you can say, hey, um, there was a question on this concept and I didn't really understand it. Uh, I think I have, uh, you know, this isn't quite making sense. So make sure that you are, you know, remembering what concepts are tripping you up before your exam, meet with your instructors, constantly meet with your instructor, friends, constantly meet with your instructor and make sure that you understand it. Even if you can't go through your specific exam questions with them, go over the concepts, go over the topics. Does that make sense? Diana, ATI, Liz, yeah, uh, uh, J.R. Payne, hey, uh, ATI, who is in HESI? Anybody in HESI? I know, uh, I actually haven't seen, this, post... this one I haven't seen too many from HESI, but yeah. Who's yeah. in HESI, anybody? Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, anyone in a HESI program. ATI seems to be more popular. My program did HESI. They're very similar. Um, they both prepare you for the NCLEX um, well. So mm -hmm. there you go. Uh, the critical, our critical cheat sheet. Again, what is the website again? Someone's asking on Facebook. NursingSchoolSuccess.com oh, okay. slash... Critical thinking. Critical thinking. Nursing school of success.com forward slash critical thinking. There you go. Um, hey, Wendell... there we go. Kelly. Yes, Hesse. Oh, Great. yes, Hesse. Uh, I just signed up for the cheat sheets. I don't know where to find them now. I will email it to you. You'll get a link in your email. So just click the link. Um, it should send. If you have any trouble with the cheat sheets, uh, just email us. Uh, hello at nursingsos.com. That's mm -hmm. our email. Hello at nursingsos.com. Me, Marilyn, Nicole, um, we will get those cheat sheets right to you if for some reason they do not end up in your email. So there's that. Okay, just real quick, George is asking, can you guys make a video on about, okay, let me start over. <laughs> uh, can you guys make a video about how taking the NCLEX test for LPN, we are using ATI, so yeah. taking N NCLEX for LPN. Um, we do have we, a... we do have a mm -hmm. little bit about that. And what's the resource that we say for NCLEX prep? Right? Well, it's yeah, it's the Saunders book. I don't know if I have it here though. Okay. I don't think it's over there. No, the no. Saunders Comprehensive Review Guide for the NCLEX RN <laughs> examination or the LPN examination. So make sure you get the right one if you're in an LPN program. Get the Saunders Comprehensive Review Guide to the LPN examination, I think is the full title. But if you just type in Saunders NCLEX, it should pop up. Uh, so you will want the RN program if you're in an R RN program or the LPN if you're in an LPN one. Okay. Sound good? All right. Sweet. Uh, wow. Let's jam on clinical just real quick yep okay yep. let's jam on clinical all so right so we we get a lot of questions about clinical um uh, specifically ashley just mentioned uh, how do you make best impression 
how do you make the best impression when doing clinicals for possible mm. job opportunities? And then Sarah, a little earlier, just said, I'm starting med surge clinical next month. What are some tips to succeed in clinical? Yay, know where things are. <laughs> That's a good um, idea. That's a good idea. So go the night before you start a clinical site. If you've never been there before, go the night before or a week before. No, make sure you know where to park, where to go, what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, like if you've never worked at a hospital before or never been in a hospital before, it, there are so many tunnels. <laughs> there are so many hallways. There are so many elevators. Just make sure you know where to go yeah. so you don't get lost in that wing over there and need to be in this wing over here. And it's like an airport. It's like an airport. A I huge airport. I definitely remember that when I was in, in school. I yeah. never, never went beforehand. And so like the first day of class, I like missed the half, half, first You're half. Like, I don't know. I was just go. kind of wandering around the hall. So <laughs> if you want to make the best impression, that's probably not the way to do it. So no. make sure that you know where you're going and yep. uh, kind of scope out the area beforehand if you can. Scope it out. You know, you know, get there on time. Yeah. Um, obviously, water always. Pack your lunch. You know, plan the night before. So those are my clinical tips. What was the other question? Um, yeah, I already just, forgot. Uh, yeah, just so, oh. uh, some tips to succeed and making um, a good impression. Making good impression. So raise your hand yeah. a lot. Raise just your hand. Be a the lot. first in line to just mm -hmm. try out anything. Know people's names. Know the names of the nurses on the floor. Know the names of the nurse manager. Uh, talk to the nurse manager. Um, know people. Get to know people while you're there. Talk to people. Talk to people on different floors. Um, you know, just really talk to people. Because we do that still in real life. Talk to people in real life. <laughs> Practice, practice, practice that practice. we are kind of out of practice. We might be a little out of practice because we're talking to you people know. in real life. Um, because you know, but yeah, yeah, definitely That's practice funny. the talking. <laughs> that is funny. Okay, friends. Uh, Man. all right. Oh, just one more thing, just real quick. Okay, Alex, uh, I've been lucky enough to land a job interview as a PCA at an LTC. Cool. Just throwing random letters out there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you have any advice on how to nail it? Uh, so again, just be super interested. Um, do some background research mm -hmm. on where you're going and uh, find things that you find interesting or that you really like about the facility or that you like about yes. their core values. Um, jam on that a little bit. Um, be prepared when you go to your interviews. Um, yeah, know about yeah, where you want to work. Like, know, know about them. Know about them. Um, and and communicate how you can add value to them. Yes. Yes, that's the key thing. How can you add value? How can you help? How do you think that you're the best fit there? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That goes a long way. All right, my friends. Like we said before, uh, follow me on Instagram, at Nursing SOS. There are secrets that won't be secret for very there. long. Oh, that's good. There are secrets that won't be secret for very long. So be sure to follow us on the things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, YouTube, can you please hit that like button if you want us to do this more? Uh, the Ask Me Anything show, uh, we did it last year for like seven months, twice a week. And then we took a break. And now we're thinking about coming back because we've gotten a lot of emails about it. Season People are two? asking, hey, where are you? And so we're thinking about coming back for season two. So if you want us to do this more, hit that like button, comment below. Um, Instagram, please like, comment, let us know. Uh, Facebook, same thing. Comment. You like on Facebook. Yeah, like Facebook's the like yep. place. Instagram is the hearts. I got it. So, all right, friends. We will see you when we'll we see, see you. you. We'll see you next <laughs> time. Instagram. So I will see you on Instagram. Okay. Let us know the best times, places, things, yes, topics, etc. Yes. that you want to talk about and hang out with us. Like we said, we really love our community and want to hang out with you guys. So and serve let us you know the when. most that we can. Um, so yeah, Instagram really is the best place. So if you're on YouTube and Facebook, please head over to you uh, to Instagram. Follow us at Nursing SOS because we do stories. Um, you know, I will be releasing, like Matthew said, the secrets. We have lots of secrets to share, and Instagram will probably know first because I do a lot of like behind the scenes stuff on Instagram and real time stuff. So Instagram will probably be the first to know. So come on over to Instagram, and also you can D DM us anytime. We'll get back to you with cheat sheets or tips or stuff like that. Um, 
And for those that have been hanging out with us for 59 minutes and 19 seconds, a uh, little tease about the secrets. It does have a lot to do with the topics that we've Everything been talking about. The, we the main about. topics that we keep talking about here on the AMAs. So yep. uh, you can take your guesses, make your guess. We are we will going to, you are things. going to be stoked. Big I things. am bursting with excitement. You have no idea. You have no idea. I have been so, so If we do excited. not stop now, she's going to spill the beans. So yes. All right, I will my talk friends. to you guys later. We will talk to you guys later. We'll see ya. Take bye care. bye. Have a great week. Bye. Bam bam. Bye, Facebook.